Hey y'all, how's it going? Um, welcome to a little bonus video I shot of all the ways that I have preserved peppers so far this year. So um, I decided 2021 was gonna be the year of the pepper and so I've been experimenting and having fun with all different ways of preserving the peppers. So in this video, it's going to be a voiced over sped up. I just put a camera up while I was cooking and I banged out pepper jelly, diced peppers, and enchilada sauce over like two hours. So it is gonna be a little sped up, but there's a lot more than just three things here. So I wanted to just quickly explain what the recipes are gonna be in this video. Some are recipes, some aren't. The first thing that I do um, are frozen diced bell peppers. Um, so that's the first thing that you're gonna see. Then you are going to see pepper jelly, so pepper jelly is really fun to make, um, and it's actually really good as a little snack if you put it over a little bit of cream cheese and spread that on crackers. So tasty. And it's also just a really fun novelty to have, um, especially if you enjoy cooking and trying new things like me. Um, and then the other thing you'll see in the video is my enchilada sauce. Now this I freeze. You probably could can this. Um, but just a quick disclaimer for this whole video, I am not an expert on canning. The best place to get information on canning is from like the ball jar cookbooks. That's how I did the pepper jelly. Um, canning is one of those things where you want to do it properly um, because you could potentially, you know, have bacteria and um, give yourself botulism um, and all of these things. So we don't necessarily have an environment in Texas where it's cool enough. We don't have a cold room here. Um, so just be very careful with your canning. I'm not going to give out any canning recipes because I don't want to be liable for if someone gets sick, just to be very honest. So enchilada sauce I freeze, the pepper jelly I canned because I had a canning recipe for it. Um, and then if you stick around for the end, I will tell you how to make these other two things. Um, these are two of our favorite things to just have in our fridge all the time that have peppers. Hey y'all, let's start preserving peppers. First up are my bell peppers. I had a very large harvest today. So we're going to dice them up into maybe half an inch cubes and we're actually going to freeze them. So I like to freeze them in plastic bags and lay them really flat so that I can actually stack them in the freezer so that they take up less room. And you want to try and squeeze out as much of the air as you can. Today we got seven quart baggies full of peppers. And then next up, we're doing a fun recipe that my grandma asked me to make, which is pepper jelly. So I am using a book from the fall canning jar. She even wrote in it, how sweet. And so we're going to weigh out three quarters of a pound of peppers. And these were mostly serranos, but some jalapenos as well. And then we're just going to start breaking those down. But first I need to find some apple cider vinegar. This is apple cider vinegar that I actually made, but is not actually ready to use. So it is vinegar, but it's really weak. So we're gonna use some Bragg's today for our apple cider vinegar. So we're gonna break out the blender now. Now you definitely don't need a super strong Vitamix like this. I have this is usually just the perks of having family in the restaurant industry, but they certainly help. It does the job pretty quickly. So we're gonna blend those up, put them in a pot, that's definitely not big enough, just wait. We're going to add more apple cider vinegar and start adding our sugar because we are making a jelly. Now the reason you need lots of room in this pot is because it is going to foam up and you can also optionally add a little bit of green food coloring just to bump up that green color, but it's definitely not necessary. So once this comes to a boil, which is really hard to see, so you wanna skim off the foam as much as you can so you can see the mixture boiling, that's when you're going to add your liquid pectin. And this is the ball jar liquid pectin. I followed the recipe exactly. So now that the mixture is ready, I'm gonna ladle it into these jars and leave a quarter of an inch of headspace and put the lids on while they're still hot. And then you're gonna process these in a water bath canner. I just recommend reading the recipe very exactly so that everything sets properly. So we are going to process these in a water bath canner. Just follow the directions really well. Mine took about 48 hours to actually set into a jelly because it's so hot and humid here. So next up is enchilada sauce. Now, 
there's not an exact recipe for this. I basically just throw as many different peppers as I have into a roasting pan. And I also do tomatillos. So these are my tomatillos that I grew and we're just going to take the husks off of them and dice them either in halves or quarters and then stick them in the oven to roast until they're soft and pliable. So after 30 minutes or so, you just wanna take everything out, put it in a big pot, and then we're going to add some things I bought from the store. So we're gonna add the juice of three limes, a whole onion, and these don't have to be like perfect cuts because we're gonna blend this all up anyway. So I'm gonna add six cloves of garlic. We really like garlic. Add some cumin, oregano, and salt. I threw a couple of tomatoes in there just because I had them. After that's all cooked together for a while, we're gonna break out the blender again, and we are going to blend this all up. It shouldn't need any extra water, but just pay attention. If it looks like it does, then add a tiny bit of water. This is also where you wanna add your cilantro, and we're gonna put it through a sieve. So the enchilada sauce, we don't want to be quite as chunky as like a salsa because we want to use it for enchiladas. So we're going to kind of guide it through that sieve. And then I actually put this in pint jars and freeze it. So I get it in the jars, I leave it to cool overnight, and then it goes into the freezer the next day. Okay, y'all, thanks so much for making it to the end of this video. Now, I want to tell you how to make two more things just really quickly. The first is this uh, salsa verde that's clearly been eaten for quite a couple of weeks. Um, this is actually a salsa verde that I made the recipe with my mom in mind because she's very sensitive to onions, which is typically in salsa. So I actually made this without onions and I took about three quarters of a pound to a pound of tomatillos and then whatever peppers I had out of the garden. So some serranos, some jalapenos, some Anaheim, some poblanos. It's not overly spicy, but I actually put all of those on our Traeger smoker for about an hour and a half with mesquite pellets in there. And then once the tomatillos were a good texture and the peppers were nice and soft, I just put this all in the blender and put it in jars in the fridge. And we've been eating it like crazy. It's great on breakfast tacos. It's really good on regular tacos. Um, it's really good just over some eggs. So definitely if you guys have a smoker, it's a great tool to utilize, especially for salsa. It gives a really good, nice, smoky flavor. And then these are pickled peppers. So these are mostly pickled jalapenos and serranos. So the pickling, I, I don't do fermented pickles. I don't do fancy pickles. I just do pickles that I can put in the fridge. So it's one part vinegar to one part water. And then you can add whatever you want from there. A little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, a little bit of garlic. And that's kind of your base for anything that you're pickling is one part vinegar to one part water. Usually, unless you have a really strong apple cider vinegar, I would recommend using distilled white vinegar because that's going to kind of give you that like vinegar punch that you're wanting. But here's the funny thing is I actually do not eat these. <laughs> these are too spicy for me. They're a little bit too much of a zip. Um, these I actually make for my boyfriend because he loves eating them on tacos. We have tacos, we have Taco Tuesday every week. So that's how you make pickled peppers. One part vinegar, one part water, and then add whatever you want from there. Um, there is a trick if you want to make something that's pickled that you want a little more of that like limey, green, dill, pickle color, you can add just a little bit of turmeric and that'll kind of give you that nice coloring that you want. So I know this is a little bit of a different video for me, but as the name of the channel implies, I wanna take you guys all the way from the seed, all the way to the plate. Ultimately, one of my biggest reasons for gardening is this part of it, the culinary part. Um, I'm somebody who grew up around food, I consider myself a foodie, but not in a snobby way, and so being able to make pepper jelly and salsa and enchilada sauce and um, pickled peppers and have peppers frozen for gumbo or whatever we want to make. Um, the, it's so fun to me. So thanks so much for joining me today and happy gardening and preserving. We are in that season where we're in the thick of it. We are trying to eat as much as we can out of the garden but also preserve as much as we can. So thanks so much for coming on the journey with me y'all. Have a good week.